Ladies and gentlemen, we are here. Get ready for Jingle all the way to hell. Merry Christmas, everybody. We have quite a night of action here, Big Underscore Bane, on pay-per-view. That's right. You better send the money if you want to view this. Of course, we are in Richmond, Virginia. Yeah. Obviously. Perfect place for Christmas. It's cold outside, and we got a hell of a night of action lined up. Absolutely, Breaker. We're going to decide our very first tag team champions tonight. Unfortunately, High Level Enterprise, Jack Gamble got injured. Ah. Uh, but we're going to finish that. But fully pulled, we'll get to bye to the finals. Lucky them. Lucky them, indeed. Doing the favor or the inevitable is going to have to fight twice tonight. But we also have Eric Barker, who's going to face the terror that flaps in PHPW. Who the hell is this? I have no idea. I'm glad Eric Barker's going to have to be the first to face him. <laughs> yeah. Lucky him. <laughs> also, a triple tango match for the number one contendership. Soda Hunter, Drew Vinsel, Tier 1 Travis Fowler. All three of these guys have great records here in PHPW. Could be anybody's game. Absolutely. Two of them have already made it to the top as far as the championship, but Drew Vince is right there. Also, we have a four-way eliminator for the Gatekeeper Championship. Aaron Anders, Elvis Aliaga, Jason Wolf, the champion, and Ethan Chambers. This is a very interesting match, and Jason Wolf has definitely got his hands full in his first big title defense. First title defense, but speaking of title defenses, Jordan Zeilinger puts his title on the line against Big Chuck and Mike the Cleaner in another triple tango match. And we saw Big Chuck and Mike the Cleaner are not exactly best of friends. They had an all-out brawl in the last episode of PHPW Adrenaline. Absolutely, and we'll get to finish that right here tonight, but very first things first. Let's get this tag tournament wrapped up. How about it? Absolutely. Poetic Prophet, of course, our last episode of Adrenaline. I had a big win over at Jeff Toon from Fully Posable. Absolutely, he did. But tonight, him and his partner, David Thomas, are going to go up against Doing the Favor. You know, I, I really, it's hard for me to call this one. Because yes. Poetic Prophet and David Thomas, I don't feel like are as experienced as a team. But sometimes that doesn't matter here in Power Hour Pro Wrestling. I mean, truthfully, they haven't teamed at all. I mean, this, at is, all. this is their That's first right. tag team match together. You notice they're not walking to the ring together. They're not. I mean, it's who knows how this is going to be. I, I'm excited to find out. I'm hoping for the best for these guys. I know David Thomas has had kind of the short end of the stick so far here in PHPW. So, I mean, honestly, I got to say I'm kind of pulling for them a little bit. I, yeah, I agree, but at the same time, the winners of this match, whoever it might be, they have to face Fully Posable, who does not have a semifinal match. That's true. I mean, it, no matter what, they are up against it because they're going up against a fresh team in Fully Posable. Very festive uh, ring here tonight at Jingle All The Way to Hell. That's how we do it, you know? We go all out on Christmas. I love it. Candy cane style ring post. I wouldn't recommend licking them though. Yeah, you know Eric Barker's gonna try yeah, though. That stupid idiot. <laughs> Luckily, Bill Venus won't have to worry about it because he's not here anymore. He got fired. Thank See you later. God. Poetic Prophet definitely looks confident. Oh, I mean, I would say confident. I don't know a thing about the guy. Never even seen his face. I have not either. He has a confident aura about him. Very How about well, that? Very well put together there. Yeah. Uh, his tag team partner making his way to the ring. David only. Thomas. David Thomas. As far as cool gear, I think these guys have definitely won it. Absolutely. And I think that's why so many people have become fans of these two. I mean, just their look really is spectacular. A lot of people are very, very into David Thomas. Kind of uh, has a superhero look and, of course, Poetic Prophet. Looks like he just stepped right off the pages of the comic book. Absolutely. But I, I'll tell you two guys who are not going to be impressed with that, and that is uh, Eric Brown and Barry Frost. No, they don't give an F about the way they look. They just want to get in there, beat him up, and leave. Barry Frost told me the quicker he can win this match, the quicker he can go back there and have him a little divvy. And you know, it's all about the Little Debbies. All about the Little Debbies. All about the Little Debbies. I mean, that's the most important part of the night. I mean, we had Big Chuck go out to Walgreens specifically to get plenty of Little Debbie snacks. And the main event, but he's still the caterer. That's right. You got, you got two jobs. That's what you signed up for, pal. Better be cooking my steak. 
sound like Bill Venus now having to have a meal in between takes here while we record. It's going to be a long show, Breaker. It is going to be a long show. <laughs> that familiar music hits. You know what that means. It's time for doing the favor. Time for a little bit DTF. I wonder if Poetic Prophet and David Thomas are DTF. Down to fight. Nice. <laughs> well, I, we're going to find out because it's time. It is time. Man, Eric Brown just hitting them power bands to the back. He I, is vascular. He is so jacked. You know, I get a real big uh, Steiner Brothers vibe from these two. Absolutely. Absolutely. They pull it off nicely. I I agree, yeah. Maybe uh, Eric ought to come in with his hair dyed blonde one day and Barry can come in with a choke collar on, like a dog collar. Oh, like like that? Like yeah. the Steiner Brothers. Like the Steiner Brothers. Yes. Yeah, I mean, like I think, that version of the Steiner Brothers. I think so. I mean, I, I always prefer Crazy Singlets, but that was me. Yes. Yeah. Well, big stalling suplex from Barry Frost is starting to get out with him. Looks like we got snow on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Those ring mats, nice uh, festive white color. I like it. Took a lot of spray paint. Yeah, it did. Very frost really hammering down Poetic Prophet. Good lord. Hey, it's cold out there, Poetic Prophet. Very chilly. Oh, very oh. stone right into the still steps. And again. Ah, man. We gotta listen to that count. Because this match can end in the count out. Absolutely. Now, I got a question. If we had a double count out with fully posable, just then be the new tag team champions? That's a very good question. I mean, I would have to say, yeah. And Right? Yeah. I mean, it... But it tag it. into David Thomas here. Ooh, oh, that was a big right <laughs> hand from Barry Frost. <laughs> Maybe not a good idea for David to come in. Maybe not. Shooting Barry across the ring there. Oh, the referee, referee went down. down. Now the tag and the point of Crawford, although was that illegal? I'm not, I definitely don't think the referee saw it. He definitely did not. Some double teams here from Poetic Crawford. He seems to be allowing it, though. Yeah, he's, he's okay with it. Maybe he heard it while he was knocked out. I, there has never been a referee in the history of wrestling that's heard something when they were out. Hey, you know, we have cheap refs. We do. You know, they don't care. They get a $20 coupon to, to Chick-fil-A. And that's about it. Speaking of Chick-fil-A, they have some really good tortilla soup. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, they do. A nice sunset flip from Eric Brown with a cover. Ooh, David Thomas got a little nervous. He was kind of creeping in there, possibly to break the count. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it Crawford back in control. Oh, what's he saying? Oh, a big oh, DDT oh, from Poetic oh, oh. Prophet. What a move. Wow. Dragging Eric Brown to the middle of the ring here. That's smart in these tag team matches. You got to keep them on your side. You know that a lot better than I do. Well, it is about cutting the ring off, especially in a match like this where, if I'm not mistaken, whoever wins this, they're going to be competing again, correct? Tonight. So whoever wins this, they're going to have a long night still ahead of them. Absolutely. The, uh, the tag hey, to Big Barry tag. Frost. Here comes Big Barry. Oh, oh, and a spear. He's taking him down. Oh. And a big right hand. Let me just punch you right in the face. Oh, and, and a big boot. Kick you right in the belly. Good lord. Just relentless. Absolutely. Barry Frost is definitely the aggressor in this match. Big spine buster. Big spine buster. He's won matches with that before, Breaker. Yes, he has. There and that's it. it. Wow. 
that quickly. Poetic Prophet is losing his mind. He is not happy about that at all. So that means our final match for the PHPW Tag Team Championship. Well, doing the favor, Eric and Barry going up against Fully Posables, Jeff and Scott Toon. Yeah, we'll see that match later tonight. What a main event that's going to be. I, I, oh, well, there's, there's David Thomas recovering from that. Big spine buster, Poetic yeah, Prophet. I mean, David coming. Thomas. Whoa, oh, whoa! my God! I was about to say, it's nothing to be ashamed of, but Poetic Prophet just taking out David Thomas here. Now, that's not... You guys, come on. You just had a tag team match. I get it. You, you're mad you lost, but... Man, Good this is Lord. such a shame to see. I, I saw a lot of big opportunities for these guys here in PHPW. Apparently, that's not going to happen anymore. No. But a Prophet's kind of doing an Undertaker salute for some reason. Yeah, I mean, he, he does what he's got to do sometimes. He's getting, David grabbing Thomas. a chair. We're grabbing weapons now. Oh, oh David, David Thomas sideswiped it. Yeah, now he's fighting back. Good for him. Oh, God. Boy, the Prophet grabbing that chair. And we don't need weapons, guys. Come on. Oh. Uh-oh. They're dangerously close to us, Big Bang. Wow. Yeah. What is going on? I guess the referee's not trying to break this up or anything. I don't know what's going on I here. I don't either. Like, this is not an official match. No. Referee's just watching, hanging out. I mean... I mean, Cody Prophet attacked David Thomas. He's just defending himself. I understand that. Yeah, but, but what now David Thomas is on the attack, though. I, I don't know what's... Whoa, and oh, he misses a God. 6.30 right on his back. Maybe he should have just walked out as soon as, I mean, as soon as he got on the offense. He should have just left. Yeah, definitely. Now they're fighting back outside the ring again. Oh, come on. Oh, into the guardrail. Oh, a big boot from Poetic Prophet. This is like, enough's enough, you know? Yeah. I mean... David Thomas just... Oh, he's got oh a freaking sledgehammer. What are you going to do with that? And these guys were tag team partners oh, less than a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, I mean... Another whoa, press whoa, side whoa. for Putt. Oh, ah. right, on the, right on the concrete there. And another chair from Putt Profit. Oh. Another... Oh! Hey, connected with that one. Whoa! And a nip no. up and right to the head. That's that ain't, it. He ain't nipping up now. That's enough. Come right, on, someone is, get the chair that away is from enough. him. I guess he feels like he uh, he did what he needed to do there, huh? Yeah, definitely. Wow. That is such a shame. Yeah, well. Well, speaking of a shame, here's yeah. Eric Barker. He's going up against the terror of the flaps of PHBW. We still don't know who this guy is. Yeah, I have no idea, but we're going to find out here right now. Wow. Because that match is right now, Breaker. Christmas has come early. Yes. Oh, man, the most energetic man in Power Hour Pro Wrestling is about to make his uh, ring. I guess about to make his entrance to the ring. I guess right now he can actually be excited because he just won a Loser Leaves Town match to uh, Bill Venus. Yeah, just a few short days ago he won, got to keep his contract alive. We've got to do something about that pyro. I swore I, I told him not to do it tonight. I, I We're spinning. We're so far in debt because of that pyro. Yeah. It's like you can buy a new car or give Eric Barker pyro. Yeah, I I rather have a new car. Yeah. Every you know? time. Every time. I mean, good grief! You are definitely that sob. He really, really is. But I'm kind of curious, Big Image Corbain, who this is going to be. I don't know. I'm I'm extremely excited to find out, though. I'm so tired of people messing with our broadcast. Oh, 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 oh here we go. The lights are out here in the arena. No, wait. No. Oh, I know that music. Who is this? Good Whoa. good brother Mike. Oh, my God. What the hell? It's GBM. GBM's. And why is he at Pyro? Good Lord. He's ready to fight. Look at him. GBM is ma officially making his debut at Power Hour Pro Wrestling. And quite a get up he's got. Hey, absolutely. Man. I mean. 
Christ. He didn't call himself the terror that flaps in PHPW for nothing. I mean, is Launchpad coming with him? I don't I, know. I don't know. I sure hope so. <laughs> My God. He's carrying a bat. Is he planning on using a bat? I mean, he's I, pointing at Eric Barker. That is quite a hat. Quite a, where do you get a hat like that? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, this dude's finding all kinds of figures up in the toy aisle, so apparently, you know, when he's not getting figures, he's looking for hats, Apparently. Too. He's the hat hunter. My God, here we go. Let's see what old GBM's got in the tank tonight. He's ready for it. I like how he's keeping his mask on. Oh, nice oh. DDT from good brother Mike. What a arm wow. break there from GBM. Fighting dirty. Oh. The fall away slam there? Yeah. I think GBM, you know, he's wearing the gloves. I think he, uh, when he heard about the COVID mask, he didn't realize what it actually is. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, it's not supposed to go over your eyes, pal. No, it should go over your face. Eric Barker, what have we got here? Oh, a shoulder oh. breaker with a cover. GBM getting up pretty quick. You know, GBM was sending messages to the entire PHPW, you know, world um, the last several weeks on Adrenaline, so... Yeah. He kind of has to win this match, does he, he not? kind of has to. I mean, we'll see. I know his big thing was that he was wanting to take down Bill Venus. Well, here's the thing. Bill Venus is gone. That's true. I Bill mean, Venus so, is gone. So, I mean, I guess the next best thing is Eric Barker. So you better start with Eric Barker and take him down. Oh, man. Shoulder tackle from Eric Barker. Oh. Eric Barker with some overhand rights. Oh, oh. It's kind of a short arm clothesline there from... Good brother Mike. Going to that nerve hold now. I noticed that seems to be a favorite here in PHPW. That a lot nerve of hold. nerve holds. Yeah. A lot of nerve holds here. Got a cover. Eric Barker not giving him an inch. He said, not the day. My pyro is better than yours. And a big elbow drop from GBM. Now into a chin lock. He just keep, keeps wrenching on that chin. What we got going on here? Up nope. on the shoulder. Oh, GBM nope. escapes. Oh, nope. a chop block to that knee. Wonder where GBM found a purple belt. <laughs> or yellow boots. <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel like that had to have been like an Amazon purchase or something. Been very possible. Eric Barker, he's trying to run away, I think. Drop down. Oh, duck the clothesline. No, oh, Eric Barker holds on. Probably a smart move there. Oh, oh. under the shoulders. Oh. What we got? Oh, got a press slam. Go for that patented press slam of his. Go for the pin. Look free out of position a little bit. Oh. And just a two count. GBM still in the match. A little bit of resolve from GBM. Let's, let's see if he can keep it up. Oh, 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 oh. That big splash to the back. You got a cover from Eric Barker. Is that it? Two. Eric wow. Barker wins, spoiling GBM's debut. Are you kidding me? Is this officially a winning streak for Eric Barker? 
God, I think so, unfortunately. Wow. What is well, happening to PHPW? I don't know. That's definitely not the way GBM wanted to start it out here, but that's the thing. Anything can happen in the world of PHPW. You know, hey, GBM, don't feel bad. Elvis Aliaga was in the same position you were. And now he's got a title match. Absolutely. So anything can happen. Eric Barker just all kinds of excited. More action to come. I jingle all the way to hell. The Triple Tango number one contenders match. Big underscore bandage. Drew Vinsel, Travis Fowler, and Soda Hunter. Who you got? You know, I don't know. I got to go with Soda Hunter. You know he's wanting that rematch. You know, but Drew Vinsel's kind of untapped. He hasn't had a lot of matches here. He is. We'll see. We'll see. That match is happening right now, Breaker. A triple tango. This is our very first triple tango match in PHPW. Absolutely it is. And here he is. He's always on the hunt, and he is ready. Absolutely all jacked up on Mountain Dew. Soda Hunter making his way to the ring. You know, you mentioned before Soda Hunter and Tier 1 Travis Fowler have both have title, had title matches, but were unsuccessful. Yes. So Drew Vinsel, he's kind of in a nothing-to-lose-everything-to-gain situation here. He definitely is, and here's the thing. Soda Hunter and Travis Fowler, when they faced Jordan Zeilinger, both of them got caught. They got caught in the submission. And I think they want one more chance because they think if they can get out of that submission, they got a pretty good shot of winning that title. Absolutely. But here comes the man, the myth, accompanied by the legend, Drew Vinsel. Drew Vinsel making his way out to the ring. I think a guy that definitely definitely is going to take the world of PHPW by storm here. Oh, absolutely he is. I believe this is only, what, his second, maybe even third match in PHPW? I believe it's his second. I mean, it could be his third. I don't know. All, all I'm saying is with a record like that, if, if you win a number one contenders match and you face the champion, whoever that may be, and win it, like, that's, that's how legends are made when they win titles that quickly. Oh, yeah. Change the landscape down. of the entire industry. Hands down. I mean, it's it's hard for anybody to walk into a company first day on the job, win a match, next day on the job, get a title shot. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's hard for us for anybody. We'll see if Drew can pull it off, though. Breaker, are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Because I think tier one's ready. <laughs> Here he comes, the one and only Travis Fowler. You know, last month at Turkey Takedown, he came this close, big underscore Bane, to winning the PHPW Championship. Just milliseconds away from getting pinfall after pinfall after pinfall. And he is looking to get back on that mountaintop again so he can dethrone the champion. Absolutely, but this is not going to be an easy match. As we know, anything can happen in a triple tango. Oh, anything can happen. It's one fall to a finish. There's no eliminations. I mean, it's no disqualification. It is a wild ride. So what do you think is the best strategy here? Is it to stay out of the way? Let these two guys work work each other down and you kind of pick the pick the you know the bones? That's if I was a professional wrestler, that's exactly how I would play it. I would run out of the ring. Hide for a little bit and see what happens in about five minutes. That being said, what if a quick pin happens and you're not available to break it? Well, then that would suck. Yes, it would. <laughs> That's why I'm not a pro wrestler. Well, but I think Drew Vitzel is taking that approach. He's kind of hanging back right now. He is for the time being. We'll see what happens. Oh, Travis. Oh, but see Travis right there. It's like, I don't think so, yeah, pal. He's like, you're not getting away that easy. Well, Drew Vitzel now taking down Travis Fowler. Oh, he's going for press slam against Soda Hunter. Is he just going to... Yep. Oh! Going to a European uppercut. I love it. Well, Trav, what are you just standing there for, Travis? I mean, he had the whole wind-up. You didn't have to stand there while he gave you the European uppercut. That's a big back suplex from Soda Hunter. You see it right there, that's a great example. As soon as Soda Hunter delivered that move, Travis hit him. Yes. So well, it's, hard, it's hard to get an advantage in this match. And I want to point out to you, Drew Vinsel rolled out of the ring as soon as that happened. He, he wanted did. to get out of the way. 
We'll rest for a little bit. Very smart strategy, I think. Absolutely it is. Let these guys duke it out for a little while. And an interesting fact here, no count outs and a triple tango match. There are no, if you want to, you can beat up the ref. Jack Gamble knows all about that. Oh yeah, he does. He learned that from legendary referee Richard Overman White. Absolutely. Soda Hunter now taking control of Drew Hensel. Tier one out inside of the ring there, just kind of recouping a little bit. With the cover. Oh. Oh. And see, tier one, smart enough to uh, break it up when he had the opportunity Absolutely. There. He also took out the ref in the meantime. That ref sucked anyway. Yeah, I'm he glad did. he got taken out. He let Poetic Prophet and David Thomas just go at it for a little while. Oh, wow. What a move there from Drew Vincent. Good Lord. Man, if this were an over-the-top rope battle royal, Drew Vincent would be the winner. He absolutely would have. Oh, back up to his feet. <laughs> he said, not today, Junior. Hammering blows from Travis Fowler. My goodness. Soda Hunter back down outside the ring. Travis, well, Drew Vincent oh. was in. He got right back well, out. Oh, no, back in. <laughs> the snow got a little cold out there, I think. Yeah, he, he can't decide what he wants to do. I don't blame him. See right there, he was attempting a move. I think took a little too long, and Soda Hunter uh, capitalized on it. Yep. And now he's now he's, now he's doing the stone cold <laughs> in the corner. But he's going for the pin while you're doing that. Nah, but it, I mean, Drew Vincent saw it coming there. Oh, oh another pop-up European uppercut from Drew Vincent with a cover on Soda Hunter. And a kick out from Soda Hunter. Travis Fowler wow. is still down and out. Yeah. Had Soda not kicked out, we'd have had a winner right there, man. Absolutely we would have. Uh oh, is this it? We've seen this before. Oh! The pop drop. But Travis Fowler's right there. Yeah, you can't really go for the pin when you got Travis there. Now's the perfect opportunity, though. But has too much time passed. Maybe. I, he's, I know he's wasting time right now. No, nope, he decided not going to attack Travis. He's going to try for the pin. I think it's too late, Breaker. It's got to be. And yeah, absolutely. Drew Wasting Vincent way kicked too out. Much time. And Soda Hunter just beating him down. Go for the pin again. Travis right here. Oh, he was a little late, but we did get a kick out from Drew Vincent. Yes. Oh, Soda went to taunt and got a right hand right in the face. You don't taunt on Tier 1's watch. So right now it's an interesting time. Drew Vinsel's kind of down and out. Soda Hunter's getting beat up by Travis Fowler. But the advantage can change very quickly. He's going for the pin. Hey, you know, if I were one of these guys, Tra uh, Travis Fowler kind of has control right now. If I was him, I'd hit him with that tier one takedown and get the pin. Drew Vinsel is down and out. But see right now, Drew Vinsel's kind of recovered. Yeah, you, yeah, you're right. He missed that opportunity. And you kind of need to have eyes in the back of your head in this match. Absolutely you do. Oh. I still think with it. Oh, what oh, is this? Oh, we've seen. Oh no. Oh no. Well Thanks scouted. Choke slam into the backbreaker. I, I still think a strategy to a triple th or a triple tango match is a lot of technique and a little bit of luck. Absolutely. Speaking of luck, we got the. Oh, the cervix crusher. Wow, what a maneuver. See, he should have just went for the pin, dragging him this way. Okay. Nope. Short on clothesline. See right there, he could have pinned uh, Travis, but Soda Hunter interrupted. Now he's going for, the cover. going for the pin. He's going to steal it. Oh. Maybe yeah. too much time again. I think too much time had passed. Soda Hunter going up top. He's not known for much of a high very, risk type of Very guy. uncharacteristic. Travis is starting to move around now. Man. Pulling out all the stops for this match, though. Wow. Shades of Jimmy King with the crown. Drew Vinsel better hurry if you're going to... Oh, oh! Drew looked out there. Last second, we got a kick out from Tier 1. M missing that drop kick. 
Sometimes those are hard to gauge. I, I, I imagine so. So the Hunter in firm control right now. A lot of guys really like to wrench that neck here, too. Yeah, yeah a, lot, a lot of wrenching of the neck. We've got to talk to the official PHPW trainer and tell them to, you know, space some of these moves out. Absolutely. What do we got here? Soda Hunter working on that arm. It's your one, Travis Fowler. Two one rolling out of the way. I, you know, at this stage of the match, I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not going to get pinned out there, but you may not be there when a pin happens. Exactly. Oh, big back body drop to Drew Vinsel. Oh. Oh, Drew Vinsel's got double underhook. What do we have here? Oh! Wow. Into a suplex. With a cover, but Travis Fowler's in the ring. He's right there. He broke it up. Oh, kind of a, oh, a T-bone suplex there from, from Drew Vinsel. Wow. Both guys are down and out. He's picking up Travis. Ooh. That's one. I think we've seen this before, Big Underscore Bane. Going for the trifecta. The hat trick. Soda Hunter's just letting it happen. Well, why not? Yeah. If he's wanting to use all that energy to take down Travis Fowler, let him do it. Yeah, absolutely. Take, now take that pin, Soda. Perfect opportunity for Soda. Oh, he no. picks up Travis. Maybe he didn't feel like it was the right opportunity there. Well, oh. Travis caught him. The gut wrench suplex of his own. This is going to cover. And a kick out from Soda Hunter. Man, alive. Like when you see the pin's not going to be broken, you think you may have a winner, but they can still kick out. Absolutely, yeah. Big right hand from Soda Hunter. Tier 1's rolling out. I don't blame him there. Yeah, and they're definitely not. Nice oh. side rushing leg sweep there from Soda Hunter. Big bulldog from Soda Hunter. Oh! Whoa! Juventus nipped oh. up and took him down. That's how you do it, right there. With the cover. Drew's Damn definitely it. one of our more athletic superstars. A absolutely. He's right up there with Bill Venus. Ah, yeah. <laughs> former superstar. <laughs> but he, and in all, all reality, he reminds me a lot of uh, Jeff Toon. A lot of athletic. I mean, yeah, yeah, very similar styles. And Drew's also kind of that hybrid where he's kind of a heavyweight wrestler but also moves like a cruiserweight. Yes, definitely. will benefit him in the future for sure. Are we going to see the cervix crusher again? I think he's going for it, Breaker. He seems to be going for it, putting Soda up on that top rope. That muscle buster style maneuver, the cervix crusher, as he calls it. Oh! oh could be all. Travis is still barely moving. We drag him to the middle. There's a cover. Oh, my and gosh. Broken up by sheer one. I think this match would have ended a couple of times had it not been for these breakups. Here. Definitely. Now, what do we got here? Oh! Whoa. We've seen that before. What's he going for right here? A little submission move right here. Could be it. He's got that arm. Could be a submission. Is that it? What is he gonna tap? He's tapping, Breaker. Wow! Soda was not there. We have a winner and your number one contender! Drew Vinsel in his like second or third match is now number one contender for our heavyweight championship. Wow.
You talk about moving up the rankings fast. So does this mean at our next pay per view, George, or, uh, Drew Vincent will be facing whoever wins our main event tonight? Absolutely, he is. That's exactly what that means. Drew Vincent has earned himself a shot at whoever the champion is after tonight. And I can't, you know, not to take anything away from any of these three guys because they put it all out there. They left it all in the ring. But Drew Vincent, your winner and new number one contender, and he gets himself a shot at Resolution Reckoning. Resolution Reckoning in January. I'm excited. But you know he's going to have his work cut out for him because whoever wins this other triple tango is definitely going to earn that championship. Oh, absolutely. What a match. What a match. Congratulations, Drew Vinsel. Well-deserved, well-earned. He's the man, he's the myth, and now he's becoming a legend here in PHPW. Absolutely. A breaker. We got more matches to come. Do us a favor, defeated the inevitable earlier on tonight, but right now we're going into the Tag Team Championship Tournament Finals with doing the favor versus fully posable breaker. We are crowning a new champion. Guaranteed. Absolutely. Guaranteed. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. Let's, let's bring him out. We get to hear that music one more time. Who, who did that music? Uh, me. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's, that's, why that's, so, that's why it's so good. I appreciate your silence, dick. I'm taking a drink now. <laughs> you gotta stay hydrated over here. Doing the favor on their way out for a second time tonight. You know, they gotta be a little tired. You know what? They don't They don't appear that tired. I think they're ready. I think they're jazzed up. I think this is gonna be a hell of a tag team contest. Oh, it's absolutely gonna be a an amazing contest between these two teams, but... Fully posable, you know, they got to be feeling it. You know, they got to be pressure here. feeling like it's right within their grasp. I think all the pressure's on doing the favor because they've already competed tonight. No matter what, they're not 100%. So we'll see how it plays out. They're ready. This kind of has the uh, Steiner Brothers versus British Bulldogs vibe, does it not? A little bit, a little bit. I don't believe those two, two teams ever competed, at least not on a major scale. But PHPW, we're giving you the next oh, one. Wow. Oh, oh, my God! Wow! The fully posable Warriors. What a rush, Big Underscore wow. Bane. <laughs> that is insane. They definitely are trying to send a message to doing the favor. And uh, wow, I love it. They are ready to go to war. Paying tribute to the late great Legion of Doom, Road Warriors, Hawk and Animal. Yes, I love it. We got Jeff Hawk and Scott Animal. Absolutely. This is great. I absolutely love this. This is great stuff. I know Scott himself is a huge fan of the Road Warriors, paying tribute to the, uh, the Hall of Famers, the late great Hawk and Animal. Let's see if this has any kind of a fear tactic on doing the favor. I, I don't know if it will or not, but look at the goal. There it is. This is what it's all about right here. Beautiful titles. Love the titles. We spent a lot of money on those titles. Yes, we did. That's why you got to start giving freaking Pyro to the Eric Barker and yeah. GBM. <laughs> How much Pyro we spent just in that one match? Yeah, there was 40000 at least. At least. At least. GBM's pyro just kept going on and on and on, though. Yeah, it did. Starting off with a backbreaker. Mm. Doesn't look like Barry's too intimidated. He does not. Um, Barry Frost, uh, he told me, again, he said he didn't care how many matches they had to go through tonight. They planned to leave as the first ever PHPW Tag Team Champions. And I've said this before, Big Underscore Bane. To be the Tag Team Champions is great, but to be the first ever Tag Team Champions, no one can take that away from you. Absolutely. Now, here's a question I have. Do you think Barry's just a little bit hacked off that he had to have two matches tonight because that takes away from his little Debbie Snack Cakes? It could I'm, be. It could be. But, it, I, I mean, it looks like he's got a little zebra cake in his beard, though, so I think he's okay. Might have had one or two. That could be the face paint, though, rubbing off on him. Who knows? Yeah. We got Jeff in there with Barry Frost right now. Referee getting out of the way. Smart move. I like how Jeff with, with AWA style hot paint. Very yes, cool. absolutely. But you know, they, they were always more of the uh, AWA type guys. I mean, they always they appreciated that old school style. We got it out. We got to tag into Scott. First time in the match here. Good 
takedown from Barry Frost there. I, I must say, this match has been almost entirely doing the favor. Yeah, Ford Pogel has not had that much offense. Do you think maybe they relied a little too heavily on the Road Warrior style gear? And, it could have been. And maybe it didn't quite have the effect that they were hoping? Well, maybe they maybe they were thinking that, you know, this will intimidate them. They were trying to play the fear factor game on them. And, like make them eat bugs? Right. And uh, it clearly didn't work. Because Where's, they got Joe, where's the, Joe Rogan when you need him? They weren't real worms. They were gummy worms. And the Husky Heartthrob likes gummy yeah, worms. The referee, the referee went down there. Down again. They tagged Eric Brown. Ooh, <laughs> big left hand right there. Eric Brown just showing that strength with that amazing physique he's got. They fully posable. You know, they've, they've got a little bit of offense here and there, but they've had a really hard time getting out of the gate in this match. Yeah, it hasn't been very consistent with them. It's been mostly doing the favor. Jeff tagged back in. Oh, big clothesline there. Oh, yeah, but I just realized this is almost like the Steiner Brothers versus the freaking Road Warriors. Man. Yeah. A battle of the ages. Cover with a snap suplex. I'll tell you, Eric Brown's got a hell of a snap suplex. He really does. I mean, he's he's an amazing competitor. He's been nothing short of incredible since he stepped through the doors. Now, here's another here's another question for you, Big Andrew Corbin. One of these teams has to lose. Yeah. Do you think at one point, you know, Eric Brown or Barry Frost or Jeff or Scott may say, you know what, maybe if we don't win the tag titles, maybe we not go our separate ways, but go after the Gatekeeper Championship. Try their hand at a singles title as well. Why not, right? They absolutely could, but I mean, let's be honest. I think for these guys, the Tag Team Championship is the Heavyweight Championship. Sure. Ooh. Oh, Jeff over there just clapping away, just having a good time. Yeah, he's he's just enjoying it. There's something kind of creepy about it do with face paint, singing and dancing. What's yeah, I, I never saw Hawk do that. I know that. <laughs> never oh. saw Hawk do that either. Good Lord. Very athletic move from Jeff Toon with a drop kick. Oh, wow. big double stop. I love it. Well, Pose will finally get in that offense that they've been looking for. I think he calls that the red pin drop. Sounds about right. Ooh, nice neck maker from Eric Brown. And one thing I like about Eric Brown, Brown he's got a very old school style about him. Absolutely. Too. He's not flashy, but he's good. He reminds me a lot of like a Dean Malenko. Yes. Yeah. Referee out of position there. Barry Frost breaking it up just to be safe. Oh, we got a possible double team. Oh. Oh. Here's All my... four guys in the ring. It's kind of turning into a brawl here. Scott realizing a possible uh, count out could happen. Now, here's another question, Big Understanding. Normally, pit, uh, titles don't change hands on count outs or disqualifications, but in this case, being that it's a vacant title, you know, if there's a count out or a disqualification, do we have new champions? I think for th in a situation like that, we'd almost have to just say no counts. You know, you know, use the 10 count outside to give him a warning. But we can't have our first champion decided on a count out. I agree. Let him fight, right? Let him fight. So Scott's tagged back in here. Oh, with Eric Brown, who's been in for a little while. Here. He has. Time to, I think it's time to make a tag. You know, you mentioned Eric Brown's like a Dean Malenko. Do you think he knows 100 and, or 1,000 holds? I bet you he knows at least 12. At least 12. You know, Chris Jericho one at one point right here. Here claimed he knew 1,004. Yeah. He never did a... A lot of those were repeats. They were. Oh, you know, he won with that fisherman suplex against David Thomas. He did not finish the job right here against Scott Toon, though. That was, that was definitely not a Moss-handled, uh, or Moss-covered three-handled family credenzel. 
No, One definitely not 1,004 holds. <laughs> Whatever the hell that move is. Referee oh, goes right. down again. Maybe stay out of the way, you idiot. We got to get a new ref. Absolutely. Got to get a new ref. On the list, no more pyro and new referees. Because we did scratch one thing off the list. Yes. Bill Venus. Yes. He was at top of the list. Nice move there from Scott taking down Barry Frost. Big elbow drop right to the gut. I mean, you throw another 20 pounds on Scott, too. I think we're looking at Animal. Absolutely. I mean, he's got that look. He's got that vibe. Well, I've never seen Animal do that. But fully posing is kind of shown to be like a more athletic version of the World Warriors. Right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, they're mean. Once they get going, it's hard to slow them down. You know, I, I will say, fully posing has had a lot more tags in this match. Yes, they have. I mean, that, that's the key to tag team wrestling. And maybe that factors in because they are real life brothers, not storyline brothers. Exactly. So maybe that um, that has something to do with it. Very well could be. Jeff in a bad part of town there in the wrong corner. But just forearm it. Oh, very oh, close right out of the ring, right into the snow. I thought he was going to do a snow angel there for a second. Yeah, I wouldn't have blamed him. I mean, snow angels are fun. They are. They are fun. Oh, he's going for that double stomp again. He missed. Ooh. Very fast. Oh, suplex oh. around the snow there. Now that's going to hurt both guys. All right. We got to get back in the ring, guys. We're up to six already on the referee's count. Barry throws Jeff back in the ring and follows him up. Both guys back in the ring. Oh, see, that gave Jeff enough time to steal the tag, and now... Oh, nobody home Scott, on that one. Scott missed. Big oh, spine buster. He, he won earlier than I He won this with one. that move. Not going for the pin this time, though. No, oh, he, now there he is. is. Ah, ooh. I think he wasted a little bit too much time Maybe there. Maybe he did. There. Maybe he did. Too much time wasted. Again, what do we got here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh! oh! And Jeff's nowhere around. One. Two. And that's it! What do we call that? Is that the leg work? I guess so. That's got to be the leg work. And we have new tag team champions, Bane. <laughs> yes. Wow, big congratulations to Eric Brown and Barry Frost doing the favor of the first ever. PHPW World Tag Team Champions. Congratulations. They went through the inevitable. They went through the Scranton Syndicate. And now tonight they went through fully posable. We can't take anything away from Jeff and Scott, though, because they definitely brought it tonight. Absolutely. And there's always another shot down the road for those two. But, Breaker, we got to keep it moving. We've already made history. Let's do it again. A four-way eliminator for the Gatekeeper Championship. Jason Wolf defends against Elvis Aliaga. Aaron Anders and Ethan Chambers. Yes, Jason Wolf threw seven guys over the top rope to earn that title. Can he win by pinfall? Jordan Zeilinger is defending his title against Big Chuck and Mike the Cleaner tonight in the triple tango for the PHPW Championship as well. Our main event, huge implications these next two big title matches. I'm ready for it, Big Bang. Absolutely. Let's go down to ringside. You know what that music means. Aaron Anders. It's time for a predicament. Aaron Anders is about to hit the ring. Now you've said before, he's called himself the gatekeeper in the past. He has. Tonight is his chance to earn that moniker here in PHPW. I spoke to Aaron backstage and he told me that it is his mission to become the next PHPW gatekeeper champion. Did he let you in his locker room? Yeah, he did. He will not let me in. I tried to talk to him earlier, and he was like, get get out of here, idiot. 
sorry. I didn't realize I didn't like you. I didn't either. I, until today. Maybe you should just be nicer to people, man. Maybe I, get, be I, nicer I, to you. I guess I, I got know. to. I don't know. You know, but uh, this is a, kind of in anybody's match. I've been in the ring with Aaron Anders. I've been in the ring with Elvis Aliaga. Jason Wolf. you know, I've never obviously stepped in the ring with him. Ethan Chambers, he just kind of shows up at Turkey Takedown out of nowhere. Yeah. I, I can't predict this one. It's literally anybody's ball game. These four-way eliminators can literally be anybody's game. I mean, you have to pin or make the other person tap out three times before you're the champion. Right. And I mean, literally anybody's ball game. Aaron Anders taking his sweet time. Absolutely he is. He's really just pandering to the crowd. Maybe that's why he doesn't like me, because I keep calling him out on pandering to the crowd. Could be. Yeah. I, I, I understand. Feels like a dance party here in PHPW. Indeed it does, and those boots belong to the one and only Elvis Aliaga. Absolutely. Mr. Ten Kinds of Handsome. Elvis Aliaga checking out that selfie stick. Always making sure he's taking good selfies. But I'll tell you, I guarantee you, the next selfie he takes, he's going to want to have that uh, gatekeeper championship on his shoulder. Absolutely. You know, you... It's always a better selfie when you got a little bit of gold in there. For sure. And, you know, I think for a lot of these guys in that uh, in that big eight-man battle royal, which featured all three of these guys besides Ethan Chambers, who made his presence known afterwards, mm -hmm. um, it could have been either any of the three. Yes. There's a lot of guys in that match, but I wouldn't have been shocked if Elvis or Aaron won it. Jason Wolf was the, you know, the guy that ended up prevailing, obviously, and winning the Gatekeeper Championship. But anything can happen. Anything can happen, and I guarantee anything will happen here tonight at Jingle All The Way to Hell. Very nice. Thank you. I practiced that quite a bit. Did you? Not really. No. I mean, it wasn't perfect or anything. It was just, I said very nice. It was good, but it wasn't sh great. Sh shut up. We, we got entrances to get through. <laughs> I mean, it was like a Netflix Christmas movie. I had zero expectations, but it didn't disappoint, I guess. I hate your guts. Here we go. You know that revving the engines. That can that only can be. O I can only mean Ethan Chambers. Mr. Shake and Bake himself is in the building. Him and, uh, him and uh, Jason Wolf have had some Twitter exchanges, too. Absolutely. Jason have. Wolf not very excited that Ethan made his presence known after he won the Gatekeeper Championship, and Ethan letting him know he's coming for that title. Yeah. I mean, and I think J these type of matches, too, you know it's easy to sneak up on somebody. Absolutely. The more is. bodies are in the ring, the more that you don't see. Obviously, Ethan with his uh, advertisements there, Snickers, Ribera, us, of course. I see Outsiders Beard Co. Outsiders Co. Beard Co. <laughs> For all your bearded needs. You know, we've seen Drew Vinsel come in, and uh, he debuted also at Turkey Takedown. Now he's in a more contender. What if Ethan Chambers, shortly after his debut, was the gatekeeper champion? I mean, that very well could be the case. We, we legit never know. And, I mean, he's got just as good of a shot as Aaron Anders and, and, and Elvis Aliaga. Now they're waiting on the champ. Here he comes, Breaker. The, the wolf gatekeeper. is in the house. It's the Jason Wolf show here tonight for the Gatekeeper Champion. Absolutely. He's looking pissed off like someone stole his artwork. Absolutely. And you know around Christmas time, they always try. He's going to take it out on these three men in the ring. The gatekeeper himself. 
Jason Wolf. He's fired up. Absolutely he is. City crowd here tonight. Yeah, that's what it's all about right there, Breaker. The Gatekeeper Championship. Four men vying for this, the title here. Kind of separating here a little bit different than the triple tango we saw earlier yes simply because they kind of pair off like this yeah this will pair off and they'll fight until it's down to basically a singles match this is elimination yes this is an elimination match so at, at some point we will have a bit of a triple tango we will Wow, Ethan Chambers down there on the floor is just smacking Aaron Anders. Aaron Anders is a pretty volatile guy. He is not going to like that very much. No, definitely not. You know, we call uh, our three ways a triple tango. Maybe we ought to rename this the, um, the square dance. I'm all about it. Wow. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Oh, speaking of wow, Jason Wolf just punched Elvis Aliaga in the thigh. Oh, drop him right down on his knees there. And on the floor, Ethan Chambers really Ooh. having his way with Aaron Anders. I would have to say a good advantage in this would be to try to get a pin early, and then you can kind of just sit back. Yeah. You know, while the... Uh, while the other two guys fight it out, kind of recover. Well, and this is this one is much different from the triple tango because when somebody goes for a pinfall, you're not wanting to break it up. Right. You want that pinfall to happen. Absolutely. And if I was Elvis Aliaga and Aaron Anders and even Ethan Chambers, I would be ganging up on Jason Wolf. You got to cover from Wolf. And only, I think, I mean, maybe not even one count there. I'm not sure if he got his hand out for one or not, but I, like I said, I'd be, I'd be ganging up on Jason Wolf to guarantee we've got a new champion. Absolutely. Because there's a reason why he won that champion. I know, I know the Battle Royal was a little bit different. Got us Boston Crab here. Absolutely. Could have a submission. All right, Elvis getting out of it. Elvis has some strong legs. A lot of time in the gym there. Yeah. We don't skip leg day. Absolutely not. Now Aaron kind of working over Ethan Chambers outside the ring. Oh, and throwing Ethan back in the ring. Elvis with a cover on Wolf. Is it? No. Wolf's still in it. Got a long ways to go. Absolutely does. Aaron with a big suplex. Oh, oh. Gord Buster. Ethan rolling out of the ring. Smart move there. Yeah, I'd, I'd get out of Aaron's way, too. So now something we weren't expecting. Aaron has now taken down Jason Wolf. We have a possible team up here. I think, I think if you're Elvis and, and Aaron, I think that's the smart strategy. Gang up on the champion. Get him out of there. And then, he, well, he's not out of there yet, guys. No, he's not. Ethan's coming around here. He's going to stop Jason Wolf. Ethan, this, this is your chance, Ethan. You, you were wanting to go after him. Now is your chance. Elvis Aliaga's got Aaron up on his shoulders. Oh, right down to the knee. Oh, Ethan showed some strength there on Wolf. He'll drop him on that top turnbuckle. Oh, good grief. Oh, nice. Nice pull-out power bomb there from Elvis. Chambers. Ooh. Side rush and leg sweep on old Elvis Aliaga. 
Ethan Chambers, he's the only man standing right now. Absolutely he is. Oh, we saw that a couple weeks ago, the pit stop. Aaron's looking to steal it. It didn't quite happen. Oh, nice big power slam to, e uh, to Aaron from Ethan Chambers. That was in a kick to the knee on Jason Wolf, picking him up on the shoulders. Oh, right to the knee oh, there again. Good. Got a cover on Jason Wolf. Is the champ going to be out? No. Kick out from Jason Wolf. Now, if you remember, a few months back, we had a four-way match for a number one contendership, and Travis Fowler pinned all three guys. Yeah, clean sweep. The clean sweep. Ethan outside the ring. Oh, gets brought back in the hard way, as they say. You know, because easily we just be stepping to the ropes. Sure. Yes, I, I'm, I'm aware. Yeah, there we go. Oh, a knee to the face. Absolutely, Ethan is down. Aaron sees an opportunity. He keeps trying to steal it. And he does this time. So Ethan Chambers has officially been eliminated. Wow. So we know one thing, Ethan Chambers will not be the new Gatekeeper Championship, at least not here tonight. Definitely not tonight. And now, if, if you were in one of these type of matches, would you be okay with Aaron stealing your pinfall? No, I wouldn't be because it, it would make me mad, to be honest with you. Yeah. You did the work. He gets the glory for the... for the. Because the record, but it's, it's always going to go down as, you know, Aaron got the first pin. Yes. I'd be like, uh-uh, not happening, pal. Yeah. I mean, it's good that... For, for all the three guys in the ring, it's good that Ethan is eliminated. Exactly. But, yeah, I'd be the one that wanted the pin. Oh, big oh. shot there. So oh. kicks to the face. Jason Wolf taking down Aaron Anders. Had a little chop fest there. Oh, nice team on suplex. Oh, what a takedown from, Eric, uh, from Jason Wolf on Elvis. Oh, oh and, and a, a kick, kick out. out. Jason Wolf just setting him up for something. I'm not sure what yet. The submission hold. Oh, he's got it. Aaron Anders just kind of watching on. Smart move there. Oh, and that's out. it. So Elvis Aliaga has now been eliminated. It's down to two, the last two guys. Yeah, the, we are down to the man who likes to call himself the gatekeeper and the gatekeeper champion. Very, very interesting here. Jason Wolf kind of letting both of them recover right Jason now. Jason Wolf's got to be a lot more confident here in the fact that it's now a one-on-one -on -one match. Absolutely. He doesn't have to watch his back anymore. Definitely not. Aaron's setting him up for something. Uh-oh. Oh, what a move by Aaron Anders. The cover. Is that it? He's won before with this. Oh, oh, not today. Jason Wolf kicks out that kill switch type move from Aaron Anders. He's going for it again. And he oh. hits it a second time. That's got to be it. The cover. That's got to be it. you got to be kidding I me. I don't believe it. Whoa, a quick bag drop, nice reversal from Jason Wolf there. Stomping away at Aaron Anders. What does he got here? Oh, 
Oh, big suplex. With a cover. A kick out from Aaron Anders. Just wrenching on that neck again. We love it around here. We love a good old wrench on the neck. <laughs> I mean, it's effective. It is effective. It hurts. I, I imagine it would. Oh, oh German. Oh, German keeping suplex. hold of him. Oh, then the dragon. I believe that is a dragon suplex. Correct. And then that's a trapped arm, oh. German, with the cover. One, two. That's wow. it. I don't believe it. Jason Wolf retains his championship. Being three other men, I do not believe it. First of all, big underscore man, have you ever been German suplex? No. It does not feel good. I can't imagine so. Especially three different versions of it. Well, what a match. Um, well, what a move there from Ethan Chambers, which is, I believe, the move Aaron stole the pin on. Yes. Or uh, he attempted to. I don't think he got it there, but... I think that's the where he stole the pin. See him running in? Yeah, it is. Yeah. But that uh, great performance from um, from everybody in the match. But Jason Wolf definitely earned that victory and retains the Gatekeeper Championship. And I'll be totally honest with you, Big Underscore Bane. I wasn't sure if it was going to happen. But he did it. I mean, we'll see how long he can hold on. I know there's a lot of guys in the back who want that championship. And we'll see if anybody can step up and take it from him. Right now, the Keeper of the Gate is Jason Wolf. Absolutely. Taking on all comers. I love it. Breaker, we're not done yet. Not by a long shot. We got the heavyweight championship. Jordan Zeilinger defending against Big Chuck and Mike the Cleaner in a triple tango match. This is going to be quite the match. All three of these guys have something to prove. Mike the Cleaner definitely wants to be the champion, as does Big Chuck. But Jordan Zeilinger has no intention of letting that title go. Absolutely, he does not. Right now, here he comes. The chef who gives no Fs. Big Chuck and Glizzy. Is that what he goes by now? That's what he calls himself. Huh? Big Chuck, here he is. Ever confident. The food was great today. One of the best catering meals I've had well, since we started PHPW. It was okay. Come on, it was pretty good. It was okay. Who doesn't like, you know, hot dogs? Well, I mean, I like hot dogs. But he's made hot dogs every single time. At least he didn't put them all in his mouth this time. Well, yeah, that's fine. But, like, mix it up. You know, throw in, throw in a hamburger. Maybe, like, macaroni and cheese with hot dogs. Or throw in a hot link. I like hot links. Sure. If we want to keep it wiener-related. <laughs> if you want to keep it wiener-related, go to Big Chuck. <laughs> oh, good lord. It's been a long night, Brad. It has been a long night of action. The order is up, bitch, because here comes challenger number two. Yes, Mike the Cleaner. This guy always means business. Absolutely. Since he does. he's been in PHPW, I don't think I've seen him crack a joke. No, Mike the Cleaner is here. Number one, he's here to win and he's here to beat people up. Absolutely. He's also head of security. But what head of security means, it doesn't mean he's preventing fights. It means he's beating everybody up. I think it just means he's like, I want to be a part of every fight. When a fight breaks out, I'm head of security. I'm going to insert myself and start throwing punches. And beat, beat everybody up. But, uh, you know, as you know, Big Chuck and Mike the Cleaner were both in our PHPW title tournament. Mm -hmm. Both made it to the semifinals. Yes. But since then, have they either had a title match? Nope. They have not. I think uh, I think they have a lot of scores to sell tonight. Absolutely, they do. And I, I, I think I think we're going to see just how much poise Jordan Zeilinger actually has now that he's in a uh, different situation than he has been in the past. Well, without a doubt, like, as we saw from the last Triple Tango, Drew Vinsel kind of came out of nowhere and won the match. Yes. And he's now the number one contender, which I have to imagine he's watching backstage. Oh, you have to know he is. Mike the Cleaner will fold your ass up. And here he comes, the PHPW heavyweight champion, Jordan Zeilinger. He's got a belly full of craft beer, 
and blood and sweat to spill. Yeah. You know, he takes his hot dogs with no buns. Look at those abs. He ain't eating no carbs. Jordan Zeilinger, I think the champion that no one saw coming, but here he is still wearing that title. He's proved everybody wrong. All the doubters, he has proved them all wrong. He's kept, He won that title and he has kept it over the last three months. Since uh, since Ghost Goblins and Grapple holds back at the end of October. Yes. But, you know, as we've already said, this will be his biggest test yet. Oh, absolutely. There it is, the heavyweight championship, what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Look at the gold. Look at the gold. Referee showing them. Showing the people. One freaking ugly referee. Yeah, he's a goofy looking some bitch, isn't he? He really is. Good lord. Mike the Cleaner, Big Chuck, Jordan Zeilinger. Let's get it out. Oh, Big Chuck is starting out heavy on Jordan Zeilinger. Oh. And, you know, these guys have that built in heat. You know, they're, they're all about going after each other. Oh, well, I, see, I think God. Mike the Cleaner was taking that previous strategy. He was going to step back and let them fight it out. Absolutely. Uh, not anymore. Jordan's like, I'm just going to kick you right in your face. Do you think, as the champ, it's a smart strategy to go ahead and be on the attack towards both of these guys? See, I would say no, but I think he kind of caught them both so off guard. It kind of benefited for him a second until Mike the Cleaner beat the hell out of him. Yes. Now we got a submission. Jordan's Jordan Island. He's not over there, pal. This ain't an optical Blit illusion. the wrong way. <laughs> oh, good lord. May have had sweat in his eyes or something. Must have. A lot of haymakers being thrown in this match. But as we saw in our last triple tango, I mean, there was a lot of... Uh, Pinfall attempts that I thought were going to get a three count that didn't happen. Oh, absolutely. I, I could see that happening in this match as well. Yes. Oh, big chuck, big suplex right in the middle of the oh. ring there. Mike Clear just enjoying every second of it. Oh, knee to the back to Jordan. Oh, what a move there. Mike the Cleaner smashing Jordan right in that top, in that turnbuckle there. I'm just choking him out. See, Jordan is also very resilient. Yes. And I think that was a big factor in why he won the title to begin with and could be a factor in helping him retain it here tonight. But the thing is, is he doesn't even have to be in that attempt. That's very true. I mean, right now he's on the outside recovering from that big punch from Big Chuck. But right, exactly. Mike, Mike the Cleaner could swoop in. Yeah, he's in control and Jordan's down. But control changes very quickly now. Big Chuck's got Cleaner picked up for a big suplex. Oh, Ooh, a brain buster. What's Jordan doing? Perch on that top rope. Oh! Mike the Cleaner rolls outside. Ooh. Oh, man. Jordan's Island are back in control. Big Chuck. Big knee drop there. And here comes Mike the Cleaner. Well, Jordan reacted to that pretty well. Though. Yeah, absolutely. There was that little scorpion death drop that he was going for right there. Oh, dropping knee right to the back of the head of Mike the Cleaner. Oh, Big Chuck showing some athleticism. Nice drop kick. Just dropping Mike the Cleaner. Absolutely, he is. Big elbow, elbow drop. And see, right now, Jordan Zeilinger is on the outside of the ring. I mean, Big Chuck, he could win it right here. Could be it. Yep. Mike the Cleaner not wanting to take any L's tonight. Definitely not.
Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Well, I, I thought he landed right on Jordan Zeilinger. Big Chuck may have missed. Big Chuck's got Jordan up on his shoulders. He's dropped right on that top rope. Cover. Oh, and a oh, kick out. man. Mike the Cleaner. Oh, wow. What a suplex there from Mike the Cleaner. Both guys are down. He has an advantage with a cover. And again, that resilience of Jordan Zeilinger with a big kick out there. Cover again from Mike the Cleaner. And a breakup from Big Chuck. A big Chuck taking control of Mike the Cleaner. Greetings from Hell's Kitchen. Oh my God. And he just clotheslines Jordan. Go for the cover, man. There With the goes. title. This is it. This has got to be it. That's it. Oh my God. What? I don't believe it. History has been made once again. We have a brand new champion. Big Chuck is the new PHPW champion. We got lineage here, Breaker. We do. Big Chuck is the second heavyweight champion, the new heavyweight champion at PHPW. What a huge shocker. Absolutely. As you saw, he perfectly timed. He hit Mike the Cleaner, knocked Jordan out of the ring, and went for that cover. And there you have it, new PHPW champion. Incredible match. All three competitors, incredible. Wow, what a match. What a night here. Absolutely, what a night. all the way to hell. And there he is. We're not best friends, but my props go out to him. Big but Chuck, hard, your new PHPW champion. Hard-fought victory from Big Chuck. What? Make my podcast. What the hell is What the hell? That's Cam Kreger. And Joe! It's the Wreck My Podcast crew? That's the Wreck My Podcast! Oh my god, what's going on? They're, they're attacking! They're taking out Big Chuck! Oh my god! They're uh, taking out our brand new champion, Breaker! So George Zeilinger, this entire time, has had the Wreck My Podcast crew ready to pounce. Wow! Cam, Craig, or Joe, the Wreck My Podcast crew taken out! Big Chuck. Oh my God. Wow. I can't believe this breaker. I mean, we're kind of running out of time here. I mean, we, we're we going to have to go. I, I can't believe what's happening. I mean, Big Chuck's trying to fight He's back. He's trying to fight back. I just don't know if he can do it, though. I mean, there's three it's, against one. It's a numbers one. game. It's three on one here. My God. I mean, Big Chuck's trying his damnedest to fight back. I just don't think it's going to happen. Oh, man, absolutely not. He's the new heavyweight champion, but he is definitely leaving with some bruises tonight from the Wreck My Podcast crew. Oh, good grief. Breaker, we're running out of time. We're, we're running out got to go. I mean, this is just a despicable act from these guys. I can't believe what I'm seeing right here.